That didn't work as I expected. Welcome. Thank goodness it's Friday. <clears throat> Excuse me while I clear my throat. <laughs> we are live. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we have a, a little bit of news, first of all, to cover uh, with uh, Cash the Line and with uh, TGI Friday. July and August, well, it is July 1st already, but July and August, there won't be a TGI Friday because it's one heck of a busy, busy two months. We've got four mega events that I'm going to, which is going to be covering uh, uh, like half of the summer. So I'll be away on the road and uh, hopefully be publishing some uh, video shorts along the way on the road as well. But uh, yeah, we've got Cash Fest in Memphis and then we've got Midwest Geobash in uh, Wauseon. I think that's how it's pronounced in Ohio. And then uh, heading out west to Geo Woodstock in uh, Abbotsford, BC and HQ for their 2020 20th year celebrate 20th anniversary celebration in 2022 <laughs> and uh, so it's going to be heck of a summer and uh, if you are going to any of those events then let me know i'd love to meet you there's lots of events that we can all attend and uh, hopefully we'll cross paths as well uh another really cool awesome milestone cash line just hit 2,000 subscribers Ooh where did it where did it go <laughs> squeaky yay um so thank you to everybody who subscribes and watches uh it's a pleasure it's awesome to have you around and to create content and inspire people to get out and go geocaching see nature have adventures all of that stuff uh tgi friday path tags uh from the path tag design live stream uh are now well they have been shipped and mailed but unfortunately to kansas <laughs> so somehow the addresses got mixed up and uh, so at cash fest i'll be getting them and then after that we'll be sending them off to everybody who has uh, won a path tag from that live stream i'll drop a link up to the live stream there it's all about how to create a path tag from scratch uh designing and ordering all of that so uh it's a hopefully very helpful and informative um stream for you but tonight we have, this is a special TGI Friday because it's not the last Friday of June. It's the first Friday of July and it's also Canada Day. Where's... Hey, oh, Canada. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be fireworks after this. So this isn't going to be a long stream, hopefully. But uh, we are going to welcome a couple of guests and... Right now, we only have one, because the other one is on his way, and he'll be here very, very shortly. But uh, let's bring in our first guest. It is Richard Comichino. Comichino and the Kid. Hello, hello, hello. How is it going? Doing great there, Jeff. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate <laughs> it there. So how's, how's the celebrations in Canada there so far? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you only look at the positive, there's a lot of positive. <laughs> um, there, I think there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of Canada flags out there. And uh, this is just holiday weekend because you guys have July 4th on Monday. Yep. And uh, it's going to be a, a, a busy, fun weekend for everybody, I hope. <laughs> um, so Joshua is on his way. He's a little behind. He'll be a few minutes behind. But... Uh, for the last couple of months, I've been doing a little bit of an initial, uh, a new segment based on our theme of excellent geocaching adventures. And so let's spotlight this month's excellent geocaching adventure. All right, so we have uh, one uh, one cache that I had found that uh, I am kind of hoping that um, 
Joshua would love to do, <laughs> but uh, let's get this thing up. It is. Is that the one? That's not the one. <laughs> let's get the right stream That's up. One of the screens. <laughs> Uh, which one is it? That's the, that's the one. There we go. There we are. So this, we're going to move into it in a second. There is a geocache that uh, is kind of extreme, and I just happened upon it and thought, oh, this would be really cool to get to. So let's uh, kind of zoom in. You know, it's kind of inspired a little bit because uh, Mia Wallace, or Annie Love, has been flying around and uh, has been sharing some photos of her travels from HQ. And she's flown over Greenland. This is, let's uh, bring up the hybrid map. There's like nothing here. It's just all <laughs> ice, all white. But if you turn on traditionals. <gasps> there's a few. What? Wow. There's one out in the middle, what? like nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's scattered around the outside. But right in the middle, it's just, what is that whiteness? <gasps> Keep zooming, zooming, zooming. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's something there. There's something there. What is it? Is it a plane wreck? Is it a camp? <laughs> it is the Summit Station. Okay. It's a five difficulty, three and a half terrain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and uh, Yeah, and I don't think it has been found yet. It's been checked on, but it has not been found. It is an FTF available. Summit Station. This thing is uh, in the middle of Greenland, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, it is it is a special summit camp, but uh, I saw it on Atlas Obscura, and look at this thing. So we've got, well, it's basically Arctic, above the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that, that'd be that. cool to see. Yeah. I like so. That's, that's a good shot. Mm. And there's the whole camp, and <laughs> the, ge the geocache is in this picture. <laughs> is it in the picture? <laughs> it's... Based on the map, it looks like it's in the corner of this little building over here. If it's a nano, and... I'm going to be upset. <laughs> uh, and so, what is it? There's, there's, there's a few pages that talk about this summit camp. And uh, I don't know who has the guts to go out and be the first to find this one. But, uh, <laughs> or yeah, the, the money. Shots big tower there i'm not sure if uh it's in this picture was it yeah there it is on the left side over there mm. that fly over wouldn't that be awesome to be, to visit that i think you have to get special charter in order to get out there obviously yeah i mean it's oh, those little so huts cool. or something that you have to stay in or is there yeah like i was just watching something about living uh in the arctic and uh there's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a research station, so yeah. there's going to be um, uh, labs and a lot of. Um, Would they just let a lot of people there Joe for work. or Joan go out there to like? I'm here to get a cash. Can I spend the night here and <laughs> get this and leave in the morning? <laughs> One of the most expensive, expensive caches to bring to get. There it is. There's the summit station. And uh, I think this is actually the picture that he used on the uh, on the listing. It's somewhere. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably under the, uh, well, I don't know. Well, let's lo let's load up the. Uh, the uh, what cache what type page. of a cache is it? Is it like other or nano or small or something or ammo can? Does it it say? is GC nine H eight eight Q. It is a traditional. Okay. It is a small. <laughs> probably don't want to drop any trackables in there. <laughs> <laughs> Stays there for five years before being picked up. <laughs> Uh, at this altitude, you may be looking for more air is the hint. So whatever that means, probably at some kind of um, uh, tank, an air tank perhaps. Um, but uh, yeah, terrain, the altitude is over 10,000 feet, 3,200 meters. And it was checked on June 15th, so just checked. Everything's so there's somebody out there who's checking on it, like, like maybe somebody who works out there or stays out there? Yeah, I guess that uh, KJ Layton must go there regularly for something. Uh, it was published back in 2000, oh, last year. Yep, so October last year. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> there's there's an adventure for you. And ooh, another bonus. Guess what? What, what, what? Well, first of all, we have a guest. It is Joshua. It's here. 
and did Goliath. You, did you miss die. me? And it's Goliath. <laughs> Yay. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hello. Sorry. Sorry, I'm fashionably late. You know, I was out geocaching, creating geocaching content, because that's what I do. That's right. That's right. That's what the world needs more of. That's right. <laughs> more geocaching content. Well, the um, extra bonus for this cache is that there are webcams here. Oh. There's no webcam cache. But I think I think this this picture was taken at 12:30 a.m. UTC. So I'm not sure what time that is local to them, but probably UTC maybe. But I've Yeah, seen midnight. I've seen mm -hmm. traditional caches that they could post the webcams as a like a bonus with the log. You know? Right. Yeah, you could do that with Adventure Labs as well. I think, yeah. or just like draw people to webcams and enjoy them. But <laughs> yeah, virtual caches especially. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe if we can publish webcams, we'll be able to get one there. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, so, <laughs> welcome, you guys. We are on to our main topic: the greatest treasure. I have, I have my uh, digital copy right here. Oops. Nice. That look on a on your digital copy there. Looks good on there. <laughs> yeah. It's crisp. It is so crisp is and crisp. clear. Look at that. Turn some pages. Did you, did you, don't, well, then I'll zoom in and uh, stuff. Don't turn too many pages. We don't want to give too much away. No. But there, there's page two. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> Rich. You worked like hard on page yo. two. Man, that was <laughs> took me for page one like, is probably bear, okay. No story. Yeah. Stage one. Yeah, no, that's it's really sharp. It's really crisp. This is like the raw comic. It's really nice. I did manage to read through it. It's awesome. It's a great story. Thank you. You did a good job. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. How would you describe this comic in one sentence? Edutainment. <laughs> Stay educational and fun, but that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah, so, introduction to geocaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, and like I, I th think you do a great job of that because throughout the book you do explain, you know, if something is a little more uh, complicated, you kind of explain what it's about. Right? Yeah, we wanted yeah. to explain things in a, in a fun way. So th there's a narrative and there's actually a story to go through it, but it's like when I find a trackable, it's like, oh, you're, if you don't know what a trackable is, you're gonna you're gonna learn. So, um, and it went beyond just you know, there is there are some things out there that talk about geocaching, but it intentionally talks about different aspects of geocaching, like mm -hmm. uh, what is a virtual cache, what is a webcam cache. Can you believe it? I put a webcam cache in there. And it's <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, its its intention is that it can be handed to anybody and from a veteran geocacher it's a lot of level there's many levels to it where they're going to find hidden easter eggs things that geocachers love but you can hand it to a, a five-year-old kid and they can have it read to them and they're going to get something out of it as well yeah yeah and uh and, and the story you um you, you you actually created a story from scratch for this right like from um based on real life based on real experiences yeah many of the caches that are in the book are actually real caches. We we put the GC codes in there. They're they're real places that people can visit. Um, so almost all the locations, not all, but almost all the locations I have actually been to in real life. And to prove it, at the end of the book, we have QR codes. So you can scan QR codes and actually see <laughs> videos of those actual locations. Yeah. The comic character has come to life. Exactly. <laughs> and that's and that's so cool because I just had um I had one of our neighbors that had some young boy, some young kids. And, and of course I'm talking about trying to tell them what geocaching is and they bought the book. And I just think it's so cool that, that somebody can like a kid or a family can read the book. And then when they're done say, Oh my gosh, this is a real thing. We can actually do this together as a family. I just think that's so cool. Yeah. I'm looking up uh, one of the f photos that you shared in stories on, uh, on Instagram. Oh yeah. Um, the kids on the log that was that was the epitome of the coolest <laughs> thing is that what you're referring to jeff yeah uh najmo geocaching i think was the account yep. yeah there we go 
I shared it on Facebook and, too. Yeah, it's just such a, a like a wonderful picture itself, and yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that's not a good commercial for this comic, I don't know what is. <laughs> There's your target demographic too, you know. And so that's the other thing I liked about this. I mean, it's it's family friendly. It's kind of intended for kids, but it's also enjoyable by adults. Yes. I yeah. Like. My my comment there is saying begging, but it should be bean. So please forgive my typo on my uh, Instagram post. <laughs> it's bean put the good use. I wanted to say, but autocorrect said begging. <laughs> one of the one of the people that supported the book on the Indiegogo campaign, I believe it was, I think it was, I want to say Scrabble Hounds. I think um, he he is teaching a geocaching summer school class, and it was so cool to see him have the Kindle version up on the on the big screen in his classroom mm -hmm. and using the comic book to teach geocaching to some young people. I thought that was really cool as well. Was yeah, and I've seen some people comment Scrabble that. Um, yeah, that uh, that they were kind of introduced to geocaching as well through it. I didn't see what that was that you were showing there. Was that a page oh. from the comic? Yeah, it was the Scrabble uh, Hounds. There, so Scrabble I... Hounds. <laughs> so they they're in the book. There they are. Yeah, there there he is. <laughs> or the tra yeah the traveling armadillos. Maybe the that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I was traveling armadillos, not Scrabble Hounds. I think that was doing teaching the class. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and you know the story. Without giving it away, I really wanted to make sure the story uh, explained the the true spirit of what geocaching is about. You know, on TikTok daily mm -hmm. now, I'm you know people see me finding things and they're like, "What the heck? Like, why would you do that? That's so, like, that's it. You went to find a piece of paper in a box, you know." So, so I really wanted to be able to communicate. To people in a fun way of like what the actual spirit of geocaching is and what it's what actually is its appeal because a lot of people just don't even get it even if you explain it really well they're like what the heck that sounds like a waste of time you know yeah and i have yeah having that story along with it really helps to like uh <laughs> enlighten it more as well because how a lot of people way to describe geocaching isn't you know it's not necessarily really exciting if they don't have the energy but then when you read the book it's it's all there yeah. Right, you kind of you can sense the the, the fun, the the joy, out of yeah. just the words and the images. So it's it's a great tool to help <laughs> proselytize the hobby. <laughs> there you go. It's a new art into geocaching. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Happy hodag. Yes. Don't uh, forget your pen. Don't worry. I, I invested in a, a ten pack of sharpies, so. <laughs> I'll, they I'll might all be sure dead by the time pens. you're done. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be at uh, Cash Fest coming yes. up. Yes, I'll be at Cash Fest. Uh, they're signing them. I'm really looking forward to that event. There's, gosh, uh, Jeff, you're a part of it, so you know all the wonderful things that are planned. And and oh, so man. Memphis, what a great city to be in, especially after the Elvis movie. I've just <laughs> I've seen that Elvis movie twice already. I'm a big <laughs> Elvis fan, so I'm excited yeah. about that. Uh, and then I'll be signing them um, at in Seattle at the 20th anniversary event where Rich will be too. So if you want a copy with both of our signatures, ooh, get your behind to Seattle at the block party. That's right. So that's happening. And, oh, see, look at that. Rich, Rich. Oh, you, got you got such a great autograph, Rich. <laughs> And then How many times I, did you practice that to make it good. It looks, yeah, it looks great. Um, and then I just found out that I'm going to be, uh, I'm going back to Hanover, Germany, the first weekend of September, uh, to Ooh. Geheimpunk. That's Daniel Flieger's company. They're celebrating their 10th anniversary on the 12th anniversary, and uh, he wanted me to come over. Smart. He wanted me to come over and uh, bring the book over and and bring, get him get him in more German hands. Hmm. Mm. Hopefully they can read it. <laughs> you might need to translate it to German. <laughs> yeah, well, you're gonna have to translate it to all these different languages now. Spread it worldwide. <laughs> yeah. Roger agrees. It's a great story. Thanks, Roger. Yeah. Uh, what is Geo Jerry says? Can't wait to share with my fourth grade students this the next school year. Get a get a copy for every single one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On that note, let's uh, announce there is going to be a giveaway 
for uh, for anybody who's watching this, whether live or uh, on repeat afterwards, um, we'll give away a copy of the comic book. Wow. And uh, so, so, yeah, I guess it's just you got to give away stuff, especially something like this. Does that mean I can win too? <laughs> no. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Hmm. <laughs> so let's say if you want to win a copy of this book, that uh, will come from Amazon, but if you are able to get to any, any of these events, then you'll be able to meet somebody and get it autographed. But uh, let's say if you email me at the Bruce at cashline.net with your geocaching username and the answer to this question, uh, then we will draw somebody who will win this copy. So let's say, let's go with We'll probably talk about this later on, but uh, you might already know if you have read the comic. Let's say, what geocache did Joshua go and find in Brazil? In Brazil? In the comic book? Because <laughs> I found lots no. in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, because of a copyright laws, we, I, won't, I wasn't able to exactly say what it was, but it should be, mm. should be obvious. It should be pretty clear, yeah. <laughs> And if anybody knows Brazil and geocaching, it's probably pretty clear what it is as well. <laughs> I can give a hint too. I the swag I found inside the geocache in the book was a bowl. A bowl. A bowl. Hmm. And how how many times have you been to the ape cat? Uh, oh, I just spilled the beans. <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> So, completely new topic. How many times have you been to the Ape Cache in Seattle? <laughs> I've been there, Rich. Gosh, Rich, you've been there many times. I've been there no, like two, seven times. Seven. So, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We didn't do 20. We went out. No, we went out 20 on bike because it was closed. One, I think, there was nothing there to be fun. I'm with you when you came with a group of Germans. So I, yeah, about seven times. Seven times. Wow. And always the same way, or did you go the back way in at all? Um, all of those, the all but two were for events, the ape events. One was with Josh. The other one was 2020 after the uh, event was canceled. But they opened up the park later on in like August or September. That my daughter and I, the kid, we mm -hmm. rode us out there. So we've all gone the same way. We haven't gone the back way up to we've all gone from the parking lot and gone because we wanted to ride our bikes and all that uh, at one time. Mm. Mm. You, you are a cyborg right now, Rich. Yeah, it's like very choppy audio. Really? Yeah. yeah. You might uh, kind of might... kind of made out some words. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there three times. I was there in 2011, the first time when the mm. Ape Cache was still the Ape Cache. Um, I went the back way because the tunnel was closed at that time. They were oh. doing something to it. Um, that was the first time. Then I went back when uh, for an Ape event, and that was the revisited version of it. Mm. So I got another find. It's a different cash. Um, and then I went with Rich. So I've been there three times. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first time I went was the revisited. So it was just a traditional. It wasn't the the icon. And then two years later, they, re, they brought it back with the icon. So this year, icon. There you go. Bill says, I was at work and a coworker came and shared a TikTok of Joshua and told me, hey, Bill, you should try this geocaching like this guy. I bet you would like it. <laughs> Bill is a fairly uh, prolific cashier in our area. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, that's funny. So so he <laughs> did not learn about geocaching from his friend. He already yep. knew about it. <laughs> and, and I saw that uh, another link went viral from uh, Lad Bible. And they were like, they, they were uh, promoting, you know, these things are hidden everywhere. It'd be crazy if you found one of these things out. And then half the comments there were like, dude, this is geocaching. It's been around 20 years. You're just finding right. out now. <laughs> I know it's a blessing and a curse on TikTok yeah. to be going viral because I just have to deal with like a lot of just ignorance and um, 
yeah, it's just, it's just it's just fascinating that that people are comment about things that uh, yeah they just have no idea about you know and everybody's trying to one up each other on on the next yeah. snarky snarky comment um, about <laughs> about our hobby and it just gets a little bit like oh how many times do I need to explain that it's a wonderful safe family friendly activity. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, uh, TikTok can be kind of mob-like as well. There's because yeah. it's, it's yeah, so many people all the time. Yep. I but think we have lost. It's introduced a lot of people to geocaching, though. Which oh, is a for good sure. Thing. Yeah, definitely. I think we lost Rich. I think he's trying to make his way back. Yeah, he might need to <laughs> restart his router. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, oh, and artwork was coming up next. Oh, we'll get to him when he gets back. Um. Actually, yeah. You have some art artwork about uh, greatest treasure, don't you? You want to see? Yeah, you want to see some of it. <laughs> this is uh, great artist at work. Concept. You can't even see it. It's like concept <laughs> stick drawings. <laughs> oh, that's upside down. Look, yeah, look there at there's a there's a cat. <laughs> Here's me, stick guy. <laughs> it's pretty. That's it's pretty amazing that this went to turned into that. Mm -hmm. you know yep so, yeah well, you need I'm that storyboard choose, yeah it's a yeah at least he you know he could get an idea what i was just showing them rich my really amazing artwork that's uh, that's that, was awesome <laughs> <laughs> because, um, at the beginning <clears throat> he sent me like it was like movie script you know like, on panel one i'm looking for a cash panel two i'm saying it's panel three and we went with that for like the first couple of pages and then i thought it would be best for him to rough them out like that so he could himself uh visualize what's going on am i coming through because i'm looking online with the youtube thing and i'm getting i'm all static you're just we're hearing you now we're hearing you okay you have headphones but, um... i turned off echo cancellation so it should be better now okay but i'm looking at the video for the youtube thing on the other window here and it looks like I'm all jittery it it's a choppy. little choppy but your audio is okay okay yeah. so um but again so i wanted to draw them out so he could visualize them so he could see how the pages are going in his own mind so and then with that it could finally you know uh, and you know put everything to paper what he was you know what he was uh thinking of there so that's why I do that <laughs> yeah it, what, it's like what go ahead go ahead i was I gonna say it's like it, one of the things that's just <laughs> Josh, no, go, Josh. Ahead. go. <laughs> i it, it's it's just really fascinating when you have a, a image and picture of what you hope it to be and to try to transfer that to another human being so they can capture what's in your brain. And the one thing that I really had that was really an advantage was that Rich is a geocacher because originally I actually wrote the story in 2016 and I was originally was going to be a children's, like a children's picture book sort of thing. Um, but I couldn't find an illustrator. And so when I realized Rich was a comic book artist, I was like, that's it. It's going to be a comic book. And he's a geocacher. So when I explain what a webcam is or I explain like a, a earth cache and like why I decided to do it the way I did, I didn't have to explain everything, um, you know, to to get them to him to understand and picture it. So he was able to picture right. because he plays the game, which is a huge, huge it's advantage. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine trying to explain this to somebody who has no idea what geocaching is. Yeah. Yeah. For you sure. Draw an can behind a tree in the middle of. Zill? What? <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Like, it, it also helps. You're, you're a geocache and a comic artist, but you're also a vlogger. Mm -hmm. So you have that aspect as well. Like, you understand what, what Josh was doing, and you can mm -hmm. help translate his energy and, and his excitement yeah. about the things that he was doing in the right way yeah, to, uh, totally. to comic form as well. E even drew in some scenes where he's talking to his camera, like, hey, I'm out at such yeah. and such place. I'm with <laughs> such and such person here. So had to incorporate that into the uh, thing as well, because that's what he does, yo. <laughs> where is it? Where is it? What's what? that there? Yeah, oh, like yeah, the first that's... page. Look, look at that. There it is. <laughs> he, he's talking to his camera. It's what I'll vlog, man. That's us right there. 
One hundred percent. Very easy to very easy to conceptualize that because everybody you, we all do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. It's the window to the world. You're looking through this little lens to see everybody that you can imagine. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we had a question come in from Cody Cash. Uh, he's a patron, but he, he's also a relatively new. Uh, he's been doing some vlogger videos as well. But he has a question for Rich. Do you have any advice for a young aspiring comic book <laughs> artist? Not me, he says, his <laughs> seven-year-old daughter. <laughs> um, I would just, just keep practicing and drawing draw frequently draw often all the time uh, find a favorite artist that you like and emulate them not copy them but see how they uh, draw things how they do how to pull a story and off of that so so again don't copy but get your influence from somebody that you like Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then, yeah, I guess you can, uh, you know, you, you, as an artist, I guess you can you can kind of mimic the way that the people you like uh, create, but um, hopefully that would kind of launch your own style as well. But yeah, like that that solid basis, you're kind of learning from somebody who uh, who has that that experience, and then. Um... Like on my videos, I have like the uh, like when I draw like my daughter and myself. Um, in those little pictures, I have like the Adventure Time style, mm. so with the uh, the bendable spaghetti yeah. arms and things like that. And when Joshua was talking about the comic. I was thinking of that, but I didn't want to copy that because I don't want to be like copying the Adventure Time style and whatnot. But um, I did come up with a a little style like for like right there, like kind of like this style, kind of cartoony and fun. <laughs> not yeah, I think it is not quite Adventure one. Time ish style, but be something kind yeah. of easy to, to kick out. Josh said no, he wanted something more detailed. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's, uh, it's funny because. In the book, it's, it even says in the making part, he goes, I really wanted Josh to be like this, but he didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no, 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 I want to be like more deep because I, I drew that sticker. The uh, the thing. Um, got it. Like I got this it. right here. There we go. You got it two times, baby. <laughs> so, so, he, so I drew that sticker for him and he was like, I like this. And it's like, oh man, that's a little bit more detailed and stuff. So, which have to draw more realistically you can't draw like goofy mm-hmm. funny, out of proportioned uh you know spins and, and you know like you could with something more cartoony so it's like oh, okay now i got to draw more realistic with it <laughs> yeah but it worked it worked out good so it kind of has like a um like cool world um what was that other movie? Is it the Cool World and uh, Roger Rabbit, where you have like real life with cartoons, or like the Mug mm-hmm. movies, where you have humans with animals. So it has that. So this way, you've got the realistic person with these goofy little cartoony <laughs> animals that he's meeting up with. <laughs> it worked out that way. Yeah, it worked well. And uh, like Neil Moore said, with um, finding your own style, I think you you do have a style, and you you pretty much own it. Like your uh, artwork for the ch- your channel and uh, and other things you've done, you can kind of tell immediately now if if we know who you are, that oh, that's Rich. That's the Coma Kino style. <laughs> I even drew Bob Billy, for, uh, Neil Moore, way back. <laughs> <laughs> And he also said, uh, much like vloggers, you find what you like and make them your own style. That's it. <laughs> yep. Well, I think, especially when it comes to vlogging, I mean, we all kind of started out somewhere, but then, um, I know for myself at least, like the first few people that I watched kind of informed how, like the style that I went with. And then, you know, eventually you kind of make it your own. But, you know, mm-hmm. you start off with whatever style you like, whatever people you like to follow. And then, uh, and then work off of that to make it your own. <clears throat> um, switch resolution here just a second because I'm being like really. Yeah, a lower resolution might help as well. <laughs> Bandwidths. Uh, so, this this comic book was something that obviously it's a big undertaking. It's it's costly and everything. But you, uh, 
Can you explain how you attempted to fund it? <laughs> yeah. Um, ch uh, there's two major funding uh, sites out there, um, <clears throat> Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, they're basically the same. The Indiegogo is a little different in that um, if you don't reach your goal, you, the, you still earn the money that you raised. Mm -hmm. So there's a little there's a little less risk involved. So that's why we decided to go to with Indiegogo. But thanks thanks to the amazing geocaching sure. people and believing in in this project, we were able to raise uh, our goal of ten thousand dollars in um, in four days. And the campaign <laughs> the campaign was six sixty days long, uh, which is pretty. It just speaks to how awesome geocachers are and and they, yeah, their their belief in myself and Rich to to actually deliver. And one of the things that we were really strategic about this, I mean, Rich started drawing the project, officially started doing page one, probably it was June of 2020. So we were working on this. We were uh, probably, I think it was like six pages from being done with the book or eight pages, Rich, something like that. When we announced the project? When, yeah, when we announced the Kickstarter campaign oh, in gosh. the first, I think it was around eight, eight or eight, 10 to eight pages left. Um, when we launched it, I think it had to have been around the Florida pages. Okay, yeah, so we were I almost think yeah. it was around that because there, yeah, there was those batch of pages that all the extra stuff we threw in at the end. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so yeah. about 10 pages I'll go left. With that. I'll go with that, <laughs> right? And we were, and that was strategic because we wanted to, I wanted to show t a taste of what we were thinking of without giving stuff away to show people that it was, a, it's a, like a real project. It's different, different than like a geocoin where you can just show fully the product of what we want to accomplish. We had to, I had to cast a vision of what it was going to be and why it was going to be good without actually showing it or actually having it finished. Um, plus having the opportunity to have uh, people in the book. So uh, all pretty much all the characters um in the book are animals except for me i'm the only really human speaking character that was intentional just so my character would stick out i guess yeah. um and uh, so but at the end of the book if if they wanted to support it at the 200 dollar level they could uh, pick an animal character and pick like a a, a distinguishing uh, accessory to add to, to show <laughs> that it was really them with their name next to each other and mm. those those sold out very quickly like within the mm. first couple hours those were gone and i had people begging me to add more and and we didn't i didn't want to have to bite off more than we could choose so this book yeah. would never finish so we limited i think to 15 or 16 of those yeah. characters so i know i was i was kind of regretful that i i didn't go to that level i i, I was trying to you know f find the funds to do it and i was like ah i did support I did support, but yeah, I, I, it would have been really cool every, to have Every little an bit helps, man. It's there. all good. It's yeah. all good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I said, I already drew you a picture. You got a picture. <laughs> That's right. It's, yeah, it's back here. Where is it? Yeah. It's right. There it is. There He's going to show it. Here's my own Comakino. Love it. <laughs> um, yeah. So and the other thing is just I know because I'm a geocacher, I know what geocachers love. So I made stickers, mm -hmm. half tags, trackables, um, and leveled them up for different levels. And I think just for those those people supporting it, knowing that that's pretty much an exclusive. Like, you know, you know, you can buy the comic when it comes out, but to be able to have it, if you want it signed for sure, and get these really cool trackables that are literally, I have a couple here. I'll show you <laughs> literally <laughs> little versions the of the comic. Um, <laughs> it is just pretty cool. Yep, there's trackables littered throughout the there's comic. Hidden stuff in the book. It's like a scavenger yeah, hunt within the so book cool. about I a scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah, so there is, there it is. Mm. So yeah, it was a very successful campaign. Um, and in full transparency, I probably budgeted a little lower than I than I should have. This project was a little bit more expensive than I expected, especially when it came to um, came to the uh, international shipping. Oh, where, yeah. where I, I charge I charge like ten dollars a person for international shipping, <laughs> and it, and I had I spent like seventy five dollars to send it to New Zealand, uh, so oh, wow. it was it, shipping was a little nuts, but that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> as as we sell these, if you still want to support the project, to make sure Josh is in not in the red but in the black, get out there and buy a 
buy a copy. <laughs> That's right. At uh, geocachingcomic.com. There it is. Which is also Joshua's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right I'm there. actually gonna. Up, right. geocache yeah, comic. I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna there do. Go. Uh, I'm gonna feature my at Cash Fest, my new stand-up routine of of uh, oh, geocaching. Paper bag on your head. You put an ammo yep. can. <laughs> exactly. That is completely a lie, but it, that could be an interesting idea in the future. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so that Nancy, was, that was... Nancy wants shirts. Nancy, that could. Be, I thought about that today. I could maybe create shirts. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be. You could you could uh, adapt the design for a T-shirt, I think for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, just especially because yeah, you could have shirt. a logo in the corner. Yep. <laughs> just plaster a comic book on your chest and then walk around. There you go. <laughs> and then you could like show people like people can read off your chest. There you go. <laughs> you know? Hello. Oh, uh, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, other than um, things like funding, were there any other hurdles or things that you learned about doing this project? Formatting that might the be able to help anybody else who's doing something. Yes, <laughs> that was that was a I wouldn't that, say a nightmare. That was but... a nightmare for the first week and a half to two weeks was see when we worked on this, I looked up American comic book page you know, sizes for uh, you know I, because mm. there's a program I use called Clip Studio Paint. You can put all that information in. You can put in your safe area, your trim size, your bleed size. Now, for people out there who don't know, I'll just go ahead and go to the first page here. The, the safe zone is here to where that is where your main artwork that you want to have your text, your green. You don't want it to go outside of that zone. If you look at any comic books, they will have uh, pretty much that type of a formation and format. Mm -hmm. Then you have the actual trim size. How big is the book? And then if you have full pages, full bleed pages, where the image is going off uh, the page, for example, like yeah, here yeah. on the space station, you want to make sure that that bleeds off past the trim size in case when they're printing, if they cut it, you don't have white space and things showing. Mm -hmm. Amazon is a little different. <laughs> so I had everything set for American comic book size. Their safe size and area is just like a millimeter or two smaller, meaning we had panels going over, which is okay, but that would mean that text would go over the safe zone. And... Um, they would let us know, and you'll be, you submit it in a day for their review crew to look over be like, yes, this is great. We'll publish this. Or, whoa, you guys really screwed up. No. <laughs> Which, that happened a lot. So I eventually had to go through, reformat, like set up a new file for the book, 40-some pages, which the program automatically just does, you know, just prints it out. There you go. But I made the trim size a little bit smaller, or I'm sorry, the safe uh, zone a little bit smaller on the inside. I would go to the original pages, save each page as a PNG, initially, go to the new file or the, uh, of it, bring it in, and then shrink the page a little bit so mm. the uh, safe the the comic is now in the new safe zone oh what does that screw up that screws up the bleed area because now you've made the page a little bit smaller so you might have a little bleed or white space around the edge of the pages yeah but does amazon not like that so <laughs> <laughs> so after a few tries of going through that I eventually, in the new format, with the new page in place, I would duplicate that layer, have it below it, and then that, uh, that page I would enlarge. So that way it now takes up that bleed area. Mm. And it took a bit to try and get it to go just right. So... Luckily, like there's a scene here, like Space Needle, let me see, or where um, 
because I would now have two layers, a smaller image and then a larger image right behind it, you would get a double image around the borders. And that really freaked me out because I'm thinking if they cut the page wrong, they're going to get this weird double image on the edge. And thank you, Amazon. They didn't do that. <laughs> ah, so that was yeah. like we've gone through 10 to 11 revisions of the book yeah. of submitting this thing. Wow. And yeah. about and the it, first. And it's, yeah, it's not instantaneous either. Yeah. So like mm. the first batch was when we're trying to submit it, they only allow a certain size. 650 megs, was it, Josh? For the book, or yeah, the, the manuscript yeah, has the file was fifty. Yeah, the file was too big. So I had wow. to then. So when we found that out, I had to re uh, render everything at a smaller resolution, and that mm -hmm. eventually led off to the issues I was mentioning there about the uh, the, the page sizes, the the safe area, then the bleed area. So that was about six, about six to seven visions of that that we went through and then we started finding typos <laughs> let's not let's not talk about those so so anyway long story short <laughs> it's done <laughs> it's done the idea the thing is we had to submit this problem over 10 times but the, we each time that we submit it you have to wait up to 72 hours for them to approve it oh, so as you can imagine yeah. we're we're in the beginning of may getting ready to publish this thing and we're getting rejected. And then we changed something the three more days rejected. Mm -hmm. So it was just very frustrating. We, there was one point that me and rich were like, will this even, we were looking for other publishers. <laughs> yeah, we were like, right, just to brew it. <laughs> um, but well, thankfully, yeah. thankfully we got it done. Yeah, yeah. When we got and, and from Amazon, the demo book, it was amazing. It was beautiful. It, look really good and I was really pleased with the quality colors on the inside were great mm -hmm. and I was I'm afraid to go to somebody else and find out that their process is terrible compared to this so mm -hmm. it was nightmare city trying to get that thing all going after the formatting stage <laughs> yeah well, and and so this was your first time doing a comic book with Amazon right so now at least now you have like that experience <laughs> yeah I did a little book through Lulu but it was it was not that difficult. It was, yeah. So I thought that, oh, it's going to be like that. Upload the things, boom, done. we'll have the way to go by the end of the week. And that's... <laughs> well, so the thing, One, yeah, two, Lulu... Three, four, Right. The Lulu doesn't, it, the, the thing that's different is that Amazon has to stand behind their products, right? So if somebody, if somebody buys a product that doesn't look good or is cut poorly or there's problems with it, then they're going to have to deal with the return because it, uh, Amazon doesn't have anything to do with me. They, they print it, they ship it. So uh, something like Lulu, it's like, whatever, we'll publish whatever you want. I mean, you're the one <laughs> selling it, not me. Um, so yeah. the nice thing about Amazon is it's, uh, somebody orders the book, they print one, they ship it. I don't have yeah. to even deal with any of that. And I just don't have the yeah. time, time to do that. So it's That's awesome that we got it through, yeah. uh, Amazon. Print on demand is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing is like a lot of, uh, campaigns, uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo and stuff, a lot of them can go over time, like way over time. So I think you guys like kept it within a, a good, yep. uh, a good schedule. So right. that's good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And also the Kickstarter, I've seen like a lot of projects where they don't get funded and then they're like, mm. you know, so I wasn't really worried about that with uh, with this because I know Josh was like, man, are, are people really going to like this? And I'm like, dude, you're the geocaching vlogger. This is going to do great. <laughs> Believe in yourself. If anybody can make a sell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I would recommend, again, everybody, if you don't already have a copy, then make sure you get to uh, geocachingcomic.com. And uh, I'll remind everybody again, if you don't, here's another way, if you don't already have it, email me, the Bruce at cacheline.net with your geocaching username and the answer to the question, uh, what geocache did Joshua go and find in Brazil? Uh, and it's in the comic book, kind of, to a degree. <laughs> yep, um, kind of, kind of. It's then, alluded to. <laughs> next week so next friday i'll uh, draw and uh pull a winner and you know what let's do two. Oh, <laughs> because richard's got one too richard's got a question for people that uh if you already have it then 
you probably already know. And that question, so question number two, who is the kid's cat pattern based off in the comic? Mm. I'm not sure if you showed the page. Maybe it was kind of blurry, but... Uh, you want me to show <laughs> it? The kid's cat pattern. Let's see it. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. Yeah. Um. All right, here's the kid. Oh, oh, it's in the cover. Yeah, here's the kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cute. The kid is a cat. <laughs> Are it's you all kidding about the kitty. Anyway, it's a little kitty. <laughs> She's, she's very angry there she, yeah I th yeah i thought that was like a really really angry like urgh, kind of a scary horror almost look but i mean <laughs> I guess that's the the point right <laughs> yep that's my kid, that's my kid. <laughs> i'm so proud well what she what she says there justifies the anger i think mm. i don't want to give it away because it's kind yeah. of funny <laughs> yeah because at, yeah. at the end of the book I was thinking if we had less pages, I was going to put like little four panel comics um, up in the back, like uh, kind of like jokes or things like that. And mm. I knew that as I was working on this, getting up to the end, it's like, I'm not going to draw anything new. I just want to get those done and then get off to the, uh, the finishing pages at the end. So I put those jokes into the actual story it's like okay i can work this in here i can work this in here so i don't have extra stuff to work on i can just work them into the story so that whole mm. dialogue we have there where she's getting angry was supposed to be like a separate like four panel comic yeah um, like a separate comic <laughs> yeah like at, like as i said like at the end i was wanting to have like you know like how did all of this happen or where did they get yeah. the money for all of this and how did yep. it, so i was going to have those as separate things but as we were working it through I was able to get those into the uh, the actual story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked how we did it because what we did was we ended the book. We kind of ended the story. And then the next page is it's all the it's all the characters that the people supported. And, the, and yeah. it kind of made it its own mini story at the very end. It's kind of cool. Yeah. And it kind of had the feel of a uh, like a, a, a crowdfunded campaign project because there's so many pages at the end that talk about the process. Yeah. And I find a lot of creators love to do that, like give that behind the scenes yeah. of, of the whole process. It's not just a comic book from like the start to the end of the story. You get that all that extra bonus stuff at the end as well, which was yeah, a nice that, touch. That was Rich's idea. I'm going to give him full credit for that. I, I was like wondering, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like that going to take a couple more months. But, and Rich, you just got those. <laughs> well, you were well, those, ready. And you, well, you had the vision for that. And uh, it's, it, it turned out really nice. But yeah, yeah. Those mm -hmm. were pretty quick. So once I started working on them, it's like I got, I was like, Oh man, there's like eight pages left, and it's taken me like two weeks to finish like a page, two to three weeks or so to finish a page because of my work schedule and everything else. And oh, we've got all these pages at the end. Is it going to be the same? But it's just like throw in a background pattern, throw in some words, you know, type up some st some stuff there, copy yeah. paste that in there, pop in a few pictures. So those pages were done pretty quick. I burn through like six of them in like a matter of days and when i was getting that done it's like these last pages will be done in like a couple of weeks so yeah. there's creativity to it but it's not like a lot of yeah. penciling and more yeah, penciling hand, and hand drawing and, and so all that yeah. stuff yeah so it's more like a um a scrapbook than a yeah. hand-drawn piece of art yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like when you get like a DVD movie and there's like always these special features like how this was made. You know, that that's the first <laughs> thing I watch when I watch a, get a movie, like a movie that I've already seen. I'll just put it in. How did they make this? How did they make this become reality? So I thought that'd yeah. be a cool feature for like the back of the book they're making of. Yeah. Yeah. Neil Moore had an interesting idea. He says mm. he think you should do a three or four panel comic for FTF magazine. Oh. Never idea. <laughs> if, if they're open for it there <laughs> i think Get there is a comic isn't there a comic in there that's every once in a while isn't there a comic in there once in a while i can't remember i swear we don't get ftf magazine in canada yet. what oh you're missing out you get the digital but you can't get the physical uh, pages yeah i'm, I'm cu um, curious um um bruce oh, the bruce <laughs> Uh, Greg, Greg, Greg oh, I'm sorry. You, I had in the corner. corner, the other corner. Oh. Um, His name's Jeff. Jeff. Uh, I'm curious. AKA. So the um, 
so not the last location of the book, but the the location right before the last location. What did you think of have including that in the story? Let me. Uh, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm referencing? Double check. The second last location in the yeah, book. not the not the end of the book, but the, the place where Annie takes me. The place where Annie the dog takes me. I don't want to give it away. I had some. Uh-huh puzzle plan for that but just due to time constraints i was like i'm not gonna do that because i already did the the hidden things on the tool that she uses yeah which was extra because you you just had like hey here's this thing then they go off to it but i was like there's too many pages between puzzles and activities so i thought i gotta throw something in here um how about hidden items so yeah that's where that came mm-hmm. from. And then when they get to the destination, I was going to have like a find your way maze yeah. through the whole thing. And I was just like, mm. no. <laughs> that's a lot of work. You already put a lot of uh, a lot of little mini games in that scavenger hunt, even the TB codes and all that stuff all in there. That's that a lot true. of stuff already. Yeah. It's like an activity book itself. <laughs> yeah. But um, for that location, yeah. I thought that was a great one to add. I mean, well, yeah. and here's the thing: like a lot money. of a lot of the places, a lot of the places in the book, I have actually been to. Yeah. But also, as I was writing the story, I was like, "What are places that I? What are geocaches that I would really like to go to?" Oh. Um, yeah. So, and there was even there was even I don't know if you caught it. It's a little, little Easter egg. We added also a, another cache that we didn't get a chance to go to, but we pointed to it as we were flying over it. I don't know if you caught that. Oh. Yeah, it's really? an actual oh, cache maybe. location. Oh, um, it's. Uh, hmm. It's, it's kind of after easy. New York going to uh, Hanover. So it's that little oh. panel there. There's a thing where there's reference to an actual real geocache. <laughs> um, I'll, have to, I'll have to look closely. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, really I think you'll appreciate it. It's yeah. just another Easter egg. It's, it's right above the picture of the building where um, Ray's looking at the building. I can't even find it. Oh, there it is. Yep. It's here. It's right there yeah you see that oh uh, yeah <laughs> well I'm, I'm like way at the back <laughs> anyway yep so yeah no little easter eggs like that are also good because they because like the kids might not see it but then adults who are watching they'll be like ah yeah uh-huh and we explain <laughs> and we explain what it is um yeah so and a lot of people are asking is there going to be a part two and, and boy that's a I mean, this is a two-year project. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Uh, so, well, that kind of leads into the next oh, question: no. What's coming up next for you guys? Are there any projects? Anything coming down the line? We're just right now. We're I think we're just reveling in the fact that it's out. Like mm. you know, it, it's like it's done. It's done. it's like you know, it's, <laughs> it's like I'm pretty sure like when people make movies, it's like they make them years ago, and then there's a process of like actually like making it and then there's the editing process and then like it actually comes out and they're they're promoting something that they've been working on mm-hmm. for two or three years so this is a part of the process it's like we're in the phase of like getting it out to people and getting it in people's hands and i haven't even been thinking about really yeah. Yeah. if i want to create something a, a part two or a, a different type of story so yeah i'm not there but mentally. maybe somewhere somewhere yeah, in the back of the head there maybe i'm not <laughs> but there mentally. don't even think about it yet um, but get through it, this just, year first yeah just like anything what it would take what it would take for me is if i had a very compelling story it's kind of the same thing with like mm. us that put out gif uh geocaching film festival entries it's like if i have a really good story to tell that might mm. motivate me you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh just to reiterate pizza Nins is asking if there's going to be copies at cash fest to buy yes there will be I just they just came in the mail. So yeah, I will Sweet. bring copy to purchase there. <laughs> yes. Oh hey, he just asked another good question. A future animated gift film? <gasps> animated. <laughs> Can I, you make I cartoon? Have, hey Rich, do you cartoon? <laughs> I, I I seriously have an idea for an animated thing, but I just don't I, I don't know how it, I would do it. Um because with the the program that I use to make this you can also do animations with it. So I have this whole other, uh, hmm. you know, like geocaching horror story, like cause that's kind of like a theme I have with the other gifts that I've done to where I have an idea for it, but to animate it, because I would have to be drawing 24 pictures 
for illustrations a second. Wow. <laughs> times that by how many minutes I want that thing to be in. And then it's, you know, I, I know there's ways I can cheat my way around it and stuff, but I, I don't know. It's, it's like I'm thinking of it, but I probably won't do it. I'll just do something different. <laughs> do it. Well, to think about cheat it. Cheat your way around. <laughs> cheat your way around. Two casters won't know. <laughs> Just to to, uh, <laughs> to give well, a little what? bit of an idea, there's 44 pages in the comic book. That's about at 24 frames a second, two seconds of cartoon. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's much. a lot of work. <laughs> maybe you could put. Maybe I could be in it, and you could just put like those, like what they did for Avatar. Just put electrodes on me, and we'll do like <laughs> we can do a, a like a Pixar motion <laughs> capture. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, can you do that? <laughs> He's like, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got one more question, and this one is also from Cody Cash. For both of you, let's make it this question. What is your favorite book or comic book? Obviously, you both have a, a history with comics because you love them. Is there one that you remember or that you like above all the others? Um, I liked Black Torch when I was reading it. It was... Uh, a different type of a story than the typical Japanese comics I read, and the artwork was really cool in it. Um, but one book I really love is Drifting Dragons. It's um, mm. it's kind of like a slice of life story of people that you know, the hunters. Um, they're in airships. They go out. They hunt dragons. And then they eat them. They uh, it's like there's it, there's recipes and stuff that they actually put in the book. Like <laughs> if you catch a dragon, here's what you can do. And, and it sounds really cool. But the thing I really love about it is it's Studio Ghibli style. If you ever you know see any of their movies like Totoro or Nausicaa, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, Laputa, any of those movies, it looks like the artist is emulating that style of uh, Miyazaki's movies. And every panel, it just has character. The characters look real and unique. Everyone's different. And usually I don't like slice of life stories because I like adventure, you know, uh, medieval stories, mm -hmm. fantasy, sci-fi, giant mechs, that type of a thing. But this book, I love it. It's, it, it the illustrations are great. I'm, I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, I, I honestly am, have never really been that into comic books before. I mean, I, I enjoy them, but I'm not like a, a huge fan of them. Um, yeah, and actually, um, when I did the layouts, however, I actually had to look at a real comic book because because Rich was like, "Hey, give <laughs> draw some rough outs." I was like, "I gotta f figure out how," you know. So I have like this one, my Back to the Future. <laughs> to the future, book. you're kidding. So yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, so this is how comic books are laid out." So. Um, so that was a good reference for me is this, thankfully I have this one, but, but, um, That's awesome. the book, the book that inspired me for the greatest treasure was an old Sesame street book, uh, featuring Grover called there's a, a monster at the end of this book. And what I loved about that is that the title of it is like, um, I think it's called the monster at the end of this book. And the whole question, even just from the title is who is the monster at the end of the book? And the whole, the whole book is him getting nervous and getting scared at, at the monster at the end of the book. And while we, mm. spoiler alert, you ready? Spoiler alert. You find out that the monster all along is him <laughs> and he, and he didn't have to be scared all along. So, um, so when I was writing the greatest treasure, the whole thing is like, as you're going through it, it's just asking the question, what is the greatest treasure? And so mm. that's the, that's the story. So I thought, oh, it's, it's, I wanted to have kind of a twist ending like the monster at the end of this book. So mm. that's, that was yeah. my inspiration a little bit. Well, it's a great story. I'll just remind everybody: there's two ways to win a copy. If you don't already uh, don't already have one, email the Bruce at cashline.net with it, your, your geocaching username and uh, well, both question answers if you really want to. Question one: Who is the kid's cat pattern based off of in the comic? And question two: What geocache did Joshua go and find in Brazil? Email me, and next Friday I'll uh, randomly draw two winners for those comic books. Yeah. Uh, on that note, I guess you guys, congratulations on the release. I mean, that's a it's Thank a big you. project. It's and thanks huge. Thanks for having us on to talk about it. Yeah, it's it's great for the community to have something like that within its within the world <laughs> of <Yeah>. geocaching. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, thank you to everybody in chat who has come by to uh, to chat along with us uh, with all of your questions. If you uh, missed it live, then thank you for watching later. And uh, thank you all patrons who have uh, supported Cash Line to make all this kind of stuff possible. Um, Joshua's got a Patreon as well. When we create, you know, it, it costs. It's time, it's effort, and uh, your support makes all this kind of stuff possible, especially something like the comic book. <laughs> yeah. So thank you to everybody who has helped support. And Jeff, thank you so much as well. This is a lot of fun. It's it's been uh, it's really awesome to be able to, to talk about this and. And let people know about it and hopefully you know our, our little corner of the uh, of the world in our geocaching niche hopefully everybody at least will get to hear about it and, and be able to choose yeah. if they want to support it support it so thank you yeah. i really appreciate it no problem and i'm sure all of us are super excited to meet everybody at these upcoming events so yes, yes if you see us see wave you. us yeah. down shake our hands we'd love to shake your hand too <laughs> so thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video as always, happy caching and excellent adventuring. <laughs>